What's going on guys, it is Murdering here, back with another Raid Shadow Legends video. Today I have a really fun one for you. There's only so much you can really do in the arena. I've done the ghost second thing, I've made a tanky team, I've made fast teams before, I've used the double hegemond, and I've been trying to think of what can we do that would be really fun. So I am not really sure what order of events happened that made me think of trying something like this, but I got a really good idea. And it allows me to use two champions to beat speed teams. And not only that, but none of the champions has a speed boost. None of the champions has a turn meter boost. It's a lot of fun and I'll kind of walk you through what I was thinking when I did it. And from there, it will be much easier to understand why I picked the champions I did, so on and so forth. So the first thing you have to look at is a team like this one on the bottom here. And you have to say, what makes this team work? You have an Arbiter, Alessandra, that's probably going to go first, Even Sound and Weekend, and your Nuke Champion, which is going to be the Trunda. So that's pretty much self-explanatory, and that's kind of how the way things work. So I said, what if we did something a little bit different, and what can I do to counter a team like that? So I said, okay, there's lots of single target Nuke Champions, how can I use that to my benefit? So I thought to myself, what champion could you get rid of on an arena team that would make them absolutely useless? That would be their fastest champion. And you don't need to know which one the fastest is going into the match. You just have to look at the turn meters once you enter the match. I'm going to show you an example very quickly of what exactly I'm talking about and why it was so fun to make. So we're going to start off with this battle here. As we can see, I'm only using a Lord Shazar as well as a Royal Huntsman. So let's see what we can do to this team and if everything works out as planned. All right, so for that last example, the servers kept crashing over and over again. So unfortunately, I had to refresh the page. But now let's take a look at what I was trying to show before. And let's do it against this team here. So the key takeaway is going to be getting rid of their fastest champion, having your next fastest champion be faster than their turn meter booster, which... As I explained, happens sometimes, doesn't happen other times. Hopefully the bombs from Shazar don't make the server crash. That's what was happening a little while ago. And it's looking like the servers don't want to... Okay, so we are getting into the arena. So let's see if this works out. And hopefully the bombs don't prove to be as much of a problem as the last ones. So I misclicked there. What I was supposed to do was I was supposed to one-shot the Arbiter with the A3 of Royal Huntsman. But let's see if this works out anyways. Okay, that ended up working out. That's not what I'm trying to show you here, even though it does work. So now that we saw it once, let's get right into it again. The main goal is I put my Arbiter gear onto Royal Huntsman. So what is that going to do for me? That's going to allow me to get rid of the main threat on this team here. And I have my Shazar with the ability to go second. Now, unfortunately, whenever fighting a Trunda, it's always a gamble here. And hoping they die so they did die to the bombs but if i get a weak hit on a chunda i'm 100 dead no matter what but as you can see i'm just using two champions you can definitely use three champions now the first thing that i actually did try was i used cupidus and i was using three champions so cupidus would use his a3 first but i wasn't aiming for their arbiter or their fastest champion what i was doing was i was aiming for their squishy dps and once Cupidus gets a kill, he has a chance to apply HP burn on all of the allies. So if you can guess who my third champion is, it was in fact my damage dealing Torment, who does insane damage. So what happens is, Cupidus went first, used that A3, one shot the DPS, applied HP burn on everybody, then their Arbiter or Lissandra would go second, turn rate of boost, freeze, then Torment would start counterattacking, and Shazar wouldn't even get a turn to go. Or Tormund just started one-shotting everyone with his A1. That was critting for about 27,000 without a defense down. So I definitely think this strategy is really cool. And while it may not be easier for some people to replicate, you would have to have a fast champion. But the success rate on this happening is actually rather high, believe it or not. Because by taking out their fastest champion, it kind of opens you up to a lot of possibilities that you wouldn't normally have. And once again, granted, I'm only using two champions. You can definitely use more than one. The real benefit to this is this takes all of the hard work 
your enemy could have possibly done into speed tuning a team and it pretty much makes it irrelevant. You make the speed tune whatever you want it to be based on your champions if your fastest champion is a one shot DPSer like Royal Huntsman. With his A3, for those of you who don't know how it works, his A3 hits extremely hard, ignores all defense. So with my Arbiter's gear, I luckily I had crit rate gloves with speed on it as one of my fastest pieces. And with that alone, that was enough to alter his masteries to make sure he was one-shotting any type of turn meter booster that I could possibly be faced in this game. So now let's try fighting this team with a Tormin, see if we can survive. I'm actually not sure if Shazar will in fact freeze himself, so I guess we're going to find out together here. Use that A2. Okay, he doesn't freeze himself. Maybe I got lucky, you never know. Bomb the champions. Okay, Warlord survived there. That's bad. And so did Tormund. So we have some frozen people here. Our biggest threat is probably going to be... Well, I can't kill anyone else, so let's just go straight after Madam Saris. And thankfully, my champions are fast enough. We're going to attempt to get the kill here. Let's see if it actually is going to be possible. No, we couldn't kill Tormund. Okay, so I did live there, which is the good news. Now let's try to do some damage to... Okay, not terrible. It doesn't look like I'm going to be able to kill anybody. And I'm going to keep getting frozen. Try to block... Okay, so Shazar does freeze himself as I thought he would. I have one more turn for the bombs. Thankfully, I'm fast enough, so I should be able to get away with it. However, now he's not going to have attack up. Let's toss these bombs on, see if I can do some work here. Okay, so my bombs did nothing to that Tormund. I'm not sure why. That doesn't really make any sense. It could be buggy. The servers have been buggy before, or for some reason, my 30,000 bombs aren't hitting for 30,000 anymore, which is definitely possible. So let's try this second team here instead. Going after the same principle of just one-shotting their Arbiter, and pretty much abusing this and just seeing how far I can actually get with this. So obviously I have a chance of weak hitting the Seeker here, that I'm not too worried about. Everyone else should die, alright perfect. So this was a lot of fun to do, as you can see I'm using two champions in I guess low gold 4. Well low gold 4, you know what, I'm gonna fight this team again, I hate losing. Maybe we try and throw in a, another champion here, do I still have any gear on Cupidus? 139 speed, that's a no for sure. I suppose I could throw in Venus, the she of gear, 257. Not crazy speed, but possibly enough to make a difference. Or we can actually use Hexia. Let's use Hexia. We just did a video. She was awesome to see. So let's throw in Hexia here and see if she's going to make the difference at all. We're going to start with this A3 here. Let's take out her Arbiter first. Now we're just dealing with a three-man team here. And let's see if we can get more damage out on these bombs so none of the bombs actually landed for warlord which is rather surprising now let's see hexia's damage easy one shot as to be expected now let's use this a1 another good thing about having really fast champions they tend to lap the opponents there's the counter attack Shazar gets to go again not going to be able to get the kill there he has the poke Okay, and he's dead. So perfect. That was a lot of fun. Hexia obviously carried me there. Hexia's OP. Everyone knows it. So this definitely opens things up. Let me show you the gear I'm using so you have an idea on what these champions look like. So as mentioned before, I took my... I've never actually done this before, so I don't really know what my max speed would ever be on a champion. But I took my best damage dealing speed pieces and put it on my royal huntsman here at 346 speed total stats were 4.1 thousand attack 100 crit obviously 189 crit damage and all of the damage really comes from this a3 which always ignores 100 of the defense so that was huge for masteries i just used flawless execution since i wouldn't need helm smasher and as far as the second fastest champion i used lord shazar at 318 speed 100% crit, rather low accuracy, which is fine. So those were the two champions in the kind of medley that I used. One thing I will show you guys is actually how I had my Cupidus built, and he had all of my 
fastest speed that wasn't for damage dealers. So Royal Huntsman, he's wearing the best damage dealing gear. Cupidus was actually wearing the best speed gear I have on my account, obviously besides the banner. So as we can see, we're at 361 speed on a Cupidus. Most people aren't going first, especially with Lord Shazar's 32% aura compared to Arbiter's 30% aura. That was pretty much always going first. And you can definitely do something like this to your advantage, especially if you have the combo of Lord Shazar and Royal Huntsman like I do. That 2% speed may seem small, but it can actually make a huge difference when trying to compete with an enemy Arbiter if you just give Royal Huntsman your Arbiter's gear. Now, obviously, this is going to only really apply to a select few people. You're going to need crit rate gloves. That's pretty much the most important part. Outside of that, the crit damage neck and any other pieces you really have for your champion to make it fast, you'll probably get away with. Now, as I'm explaining this, this might sound, I don't know, I guess not realistic to a lot of people. However, it's actually really efficient farming wise if you can kind of play around with the different champions you do have. If you're fast and you're using Blender and your Blender's losing to Tormund teams or you're having a hard time with Seafy, you can actually use this. Put your best gear on a damage dealing champion. Just kill their fastest champion first. And you'll actually be amazed at how easy it is to beat every single team in this gold four bracket and farm medals with much more consistently than you thought before. Now, while this video is pretty much just for fun, it turns out that this actually can be a viable strategy. And there are lots of cool iterations, as mentioned before, how I use Cupidus. There's definitely lots of cool combos you can do. Let me know what you can think of off the top of your head in the comments below. I'm interested to see if you guys can come up with something cool. One thing I wanted to try that I never ended up trying. And let me see if I still have the champion here. Okay. So I wanted to use Crypt King Grawl. I've never really seen anybody use him, but this is really cool. This is a freeze debuff on each target for one turn. They are under HP burn debuff. Extends the duration of any HP burn for three turns. This effect cannot be interested. So I was really interested in this. Throwing lots of my speed on him. Using him after somebody like a Cupidus and the HP burn goes on. So he instantly freezes the target and then Tormund gets to go. So that would be a four champion team of Lord Shazar, Cupidus, Crypt King Grawl, and then Tormund. And I'm pretty sure, unless somebody was faster than my 361, Cupidus with the 32% aura, which there are people in Platinum for sure. Gold 4, probably not unless they've dropped down. That would be a very difficult team to beat. Now, obviously, enemy teams are wearing a immunity set. A strat like that probably wouldn't work out too well. However, the one thing in my favor there is usually if you're running immunity, it's kind of like a blender team. And when you build a blender, the champions are extremely slow. So the fact that I'm going to be one shotting their turn meter booster right off the bat really gives me the edge up on the competition and might actually let my champions go two times or their damage dealing champions actually get to go once in that setup. So just to have a little bit more fun with this, let's actually try this against a champion like a Duchess to see if we can do some damage here. I don't think I've fought a Duchess yet, so I'm kind of interested to see what her passive is going to do to my Royal Huntsman's A3. All right, so let's see if we can actually kill this Arbiter with the Duchess aura. Okay, we actually did more damage than I was anticipating. Are the bombs going to be enough? That's going to be the next question. Duchess got resisted, so let's see if we can get the kill. All right, so they're going to get revived, so I'm just going to A1 here and try to use this A1 if we can get the kill, and it looks like we're just shy. So they're going to revive. I'm going to go next with this AoE, which is why I saved it. Always got to be thinking ahead here. Now we're going to go ahead and kill this Arbiter and then throw this on auto, and this is GG. Another kind of point to it's really easy to win with a team like this. And there's one other team I'm going to look for that I want to try to beat. It's a team that's wearing an immunity set. And I want to show you how you can use a Torment to your advantage with this. All right, so potentially this team is exactly what I'm looking for. It might not be. If this team were smart, the Seafy would be the fastest person on the team to always counter any Torment going after this. What we're going to try to do is we're going to try to one-shot the Seafy. And okay, perfect. So this is exactly what I'm talking about. This is a team that's built to counter a Tormund. What we're going to do is we're going to kill the Seafy. And even though they have the turn meter boost, 
Hopefully we don't die here. Okay, so we have the counterattack. This is the damage dealing Tormen. So let's see if we can get a solo off here. Let's try to provoke them first. Okay, this is working out well. The only problem is Tormen's extremely slow. So they might end up lapping. Okay, let's kill this Arbiter so we can get safe. Perfect. For some reason we are not freezing this Lissandra, which can prove to be an issue for sure. Okay, now she's frozen. We use that A1. Start doing some good damage. A2, and this should be game, set, match. So obviously people probably aren't going to be running a Tormund as slow as I am, but this is a perfect example on how you can counter a team when it's built to counter a Tormund by not using an Arbiter and using someone like a Royal Huntsman or a Nuker as your fastest champion. While this is cool, this was kind of just like a shot in the dark test. It proved to be really fun, so that I definitely enjoyed. Let me know what you guys think, and please don't forget if you have any other cool ideas on who to put in your or my fastest gear that you would think would be a fun champion to test, I'm all for it. I'll make a video about it. This is probably the most fun arena team I've made in a very long time. And I'm probably going to use this for quite some time now. Out of curiosity, just checking my defense log. The defense log is looking pretty decent. Unfortunately, my Royal Huntsman is actually using his A2, I believe, first. But still, imagine the shock people are getting when they're having a Royal Huntsman go before their turn meter booster. I'm sure it's shocking tons of people. So that's going to be it for my video today. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this content, don't forget to subscribe, turn on that notification bell so you don't miss my next video, and I will see you all in the next upload.